Hello everybody, I'm Storm here, welcome back to Stellaris, the co-dominant human elf campaign. In the last episode, we ended our war with the Metatron, taking a couple of their systems and humiliating them. Uh, so that is nice. We were able to then free our fleet from being stuck in that little pocket uh, that we had there. So now that the war is over, we need to cycle our ships back to a port. Get the fleets recombined. Uh... I guess on a role-play perspective, we are need to allow our uh, troops and their crews to kind of cycle home, get a little shore leave, rest up a little bit before we head back out on campaign. Because we're going to be in a state of near constant war for a while. Next up on the list is going to be going up against the... Uh, Galactic Defense League here with the Ozcox Synergetics and the Inari Coalition uh, to free the Human League from subjugation to the Ozcox, which they have been in since, well, the beginning of the game. So, um, we need to resolve that finally. And then, once we're done there, we're probably going to go to war with the Omni Foundry and the Zenek multi-system once our truce with the Kark hunting grounds times out uh, which is still uh, six years out if you know in the meantime if we still have some time we may head down here and start uh, aiding against the unbidden and the contingency and there is a bit of good news bad news situation here um, the Savelli appear to have combat fleets that are powerful enough to engage and destroy um, conting well, contingency and unbidden forces because they have these really crazy looking titans. Um, so, you know, that's kind of good that at least somebody else out there has the firepower to deal with these problems. The bad news is, is that they have the firepower to deal with these problems, which means if we want to um, impose some will upon them militarily, it's going to be a bit tricky. So, something to think about as we move forward. Speaking of, let's go ahead and unpause it, let's get the game running. Let's see, we are working on three, three segments of the ring world. We started a new one, uh, ring section K. Okay, so then that makes all three of those damage sections or those damage type of sections are now under repair. So once they're all done, then we can begin repairing the habitation sections and start establishing colonies on the ring world for the first time. So that'll be pretty cool. But that's a ways away at the moment. Um, how are we doing on that megastructure world that we were building? Um, it's 44% done. Alright, they're in the process of jumping. So are they. Alright, so we're in a bit of a cooldown situation here. Once our fleets are together... Well, I know how many Super Dreadnoughts and Dreadnoughts I have. We have 12 of each. I want to build some more of those. I'd like to get up to 15 of each. And what types do we want to prioritize? We need things that can deal a lot of damage from a distance. Now, the unbidden. I 
can't remember. Do these guys have strong shields? And weak hulls are the other way around. Let's see. Monthly hull regeneration. Shield regeneration plus 100%. sure but I think it's best to engage these guys at as long range as possible we need to think ahead to the time when we actually have to deal with them uh, because the closer you get to these the worse it gets for you because of their weapons um, so for dreadnoughts I think we're going to be sticking with the Titan class, with the spinal mounts, and the... Now, do we really want to use the large ion pulse missiles? Three hundred percent shield damage. Heavy concussion missiles... Ten percent shield penetration ignores eighty percent of armor. Yeah, I think the ion pulse missiles are fine. So let's get probably three more of these Titan dreadnoughts. And I'll probably be going with three more of the Colossus super dreadnoughts. Just go straight up with the large guns. I think we're just gonna let the election go as it is. I don't really have the influence to spend on trying to manipulate who gets elected. All right, so. Let's get three more Titan class Dreadnoughts building. That's going to definitely deplete our mineral reserves. Make the Raiders the rally point. Colonizing Valin, nine more months to go. Surface construction is proceeding on these colonies. I want to queue in a couple more upgrades. Construction is proceeding on Limno Station. Fleets are arriving. Once we're in orbit, we should see a large increase in the monthly resources. I would love to get like a D-class Sentinel defense system, but uh, they're a little pricey. Now, Toad Asteroid Mining. That costs us a thousand minerals and gets us eight more a month. 
So, let me see here. Alright, so, just did the math. Couldn't do it in my head. Um, so that's 125 months before it pays itself off. I mean, 125 months is not, you know, it's a pretty long time, but I mean, it, it'll eventually go by. Hispanic Commons. 350 minerals, get min three minerals and a planet modifier of minerals plus 10%. So plus 10% will be an additional one mineral. So you're getting four minerals for 350 minerals makes more sense. Because it's about a third the cost with a half the return. So, it'll pay itself off a lot quicker. Ooh. And you guys need to expand your spaceport. And then you need to build yourself a solar panel network. You guys do too. Yeah. Ah, we'll let the, the things upgrade. All right, yep, our fleets have arrived. At port. Alright, you guys should definitely merge up. And what do we see here? 40 Corvettes, 30 Destroyers, 20 Cruisers, 1 Light Carrier, 20 Battleships, 20 Battle Cruisers, 8 Carriers, 12 Dreadnoughts, 12 Super Dreadnoughts, 1 Titan, 1 Flag Ship. I'm thinking I might want to get a different Titan module, something else that increases the capabilities of the fleet and build a second Titan as well. Let's see, we have 700 fleet capacity that we can utilize. All right, who got elected? All right, Obir Loot got elected again. We're getting pretty close to that one million, um, but we are getting buffed by the spaceport, so. How much do the Super Dreadnoughts cost to build? Almost 5,000 a piece. Okay. And let me look at my sectors. We could grab 7,000 from here. We could get another 8,500 energy credits. We could get another, yeah. 
at the cost of some influence. The other thing we could be doing is colonizing more systems. We have nobody on this building? Oh, now we're starting to put... Uh... Yeah, move that guy. Valium Prime is probably going to go into this sector. See, this is an oasis world. Rocky world with a nitrogen oxygen atmosphere. Hydrosphere only supports one large body of water which has a band of vegetation around it. Rain barely reaches the inland desert that covers the majority of the planet. So 75 influence. Do we have any other oasis? Well, let's see, ocean worlds. Yeah, we do. But you know what I'm thinking? Construction complete. We need more elves. We don't have a ton of elves. They're at 50%, but uh, that's not terrible. No, don't land there. Land... I guess here? Try to one of the blank ones. We have unemployed pops. Alright, what do we want you to do? Uh, mineral output, adjacency effect, and it won't really help us there. It would help us here. Move you there. Ah, oh, we have a lot of upgrades to queue in. would really like to increase our number of directly controlled systems. Now I thought... Oh. I was gonna say, I thought one of these actually gave us one. No, no, it's the Ascension perk. There's an Ascension perk that gives us plus five to directly controlled systems. 35 months so we get our next tradition. Oh, there's the Savelli. And they're bombarding a contingency planet. It's all fine and good. 
Ooh, what's going on over here? Oh, it did look like a massive combined fleet was going to be engaging a... Unbidden fleet, but these guys are flying away. Wow, you're gonna leave the Globe Star Confederation fleet to get blown up by the Unbidden. If they turned around, they could easily wipe that fleet out. They're going to take uh, significant losses. Unless I'm wrong about their tech levels. Wow, they're pushing the... The Unbidden Fleet... To lower combat power. Now they're about even. Now that's the thing, is those uh, unbidden ships are getting a lot closer. These are getting more and more of their weapons into the fight. Hey, the, the Glove may actually win this fight. It's going to be close. Depends on if they lose, like, their flagship or a couple of their super dreadnoughts, and then they may run into some trouble. Well, while we're watching this, oh, we got one month left of the Arc Emitter. I want to see how that stacks up against our other stuff. Alright, we're getting our new dreadnoughts. I'd like to get them cycled into the fleet before we head out against the, uh, the Ozcocks. Oh yeah! Love Star Confederation are going to win this. And they have relatively equivalent technology level, which is actually good news. So it means that our own fleets are probably going to be more than capable of plowing through these unbidden when we do finally get around to dealing with them. Do we know what their ships are made of? We do. A third dimensional portal has appeared in the Pentosta system. Who does this belong to? Uh, the Vehement have just appeared. Okay, um, I need to find out where they are. We don't have any, um... 
things in our territory that are going to look like a problem. No. Okay. Yeah, so definitely the Glob are going to win this fight. We need to find out... Technology discovered. The vehement. They apparently don't have a capital. There's no hostile fleets detected in our territory. What was the name of that system? Is it the Pennock system? I'm gonna have to go back and take a look. Oh, we got our uh, new arc emitters. Uh, Dark Matter Reactor. 160 antimatter extrication optimized zero point power one power generation 384 power generation 160 hold on power generation Graviton reactor. I think that may give us better main power plants. So I'm going to grab that. Alright, and I want to take a look at... The Graviton lands. Let's see. 120 range. Uh, 30.01 damage per time. Whatever the time unit is. Colony established. Accuracy 85%. Damage 2 to 255. 14.94. Does not do anywhere near as much damage. 120 range, same range, but ignores 100% of armor and ignores 100% of shields. Oh. Ignores 85% of armor. Oh. That's interesting. I may want to mix some of these in. Like, maybe not go with all of them, but go with like a couple. At least for now, because that ignoring all armor and shields is like... Big. And even though they don't hit much harder than my, like, turbo lasers. Alright, let's see. Dreadnoughts. Battle cruisers don't carry spinal mounts. The flagship does, though. I could take maybe three of those in the flagship. Initiating communications. Hold on just a second.
And the other ones are going to be our battleships. Thanatos, Kronos, and Leto. I think our Thanatos class will be our, sp our kind of specialists. We have a few of these. Oh, come on. There we go. We have six Thanatos class battleships. Ten Litos. Alright, what is this? You are... Offering me 1100 minerals. One monthly zero resource. And they want a living metal and a dark matter. Can I give up a living metal? I can give up one more living metal and a dark matter. I don't have any zero. We agree. Alright, where are those ships? Okay, they're on their way. Are those... Civelli High Kingdom? They're part of the League of Non-Aligned Powers. And it's only a single ship. It's one battleship. One battleship is 17.8k? Your technology level is overwhelming? Okay. Uh, let's see. Can we uh, offer a trade deal for, say, a research agreement? Uh, for 30 years, and I'd be willing to send you whatever energy credits you want. It's going to be a lot of energy credits to send them. Uh, what about um, instant transfer of, uh, let's see, let's go with a lot less energy credits. And let's go with some minerals. Half our energy credits and half of our minerals. For a research agreement, we'll get a 25% research bonus for stuff that they know that we don't. Uh, yeah. I'll pay that. All right, for 30 years. Very good. And they're part of... the League of Non-Aligned Powers with the name. which they may even be willing to you know, join Federation. Which in that case, we would uh, need to go in there and help the NIB clear out their, their uh, rather significant problems. Oh, there's the vehement fleet. There they are. Ah, 
The vehement and the unbidden are fighting each other. Very good. That's the one positive of that, is that they do fight each other. Alright, but we're going to have to end this episode here. The Moj Huskin own a piece of territory there? That's interesting. All right, so we have our ships, new ships on the way. We have our new research agreements and we should be able to, or we'll be going to war with the Oz Cox Energetics and the Galactic Defense League over here. What we're probably gonna do is we're gonna take our fleet, we're gonna basically park it right next to these guys and then we'll declare war and blow away all three of these fleets pretty much right away that's kind of my plan all right so for now i hope you guys enjoyed it thanks for watching go ahead like subscribe and comment and i will see you next time